Hi there, welcome to the latest video. In this video, I'll be talking about Escape Hunt's roadmap to one pound. They're currently 11 pence a share. I'll also be looking at my total returns of investments uh, of the last 12, 15 years, uh, plus the returns on the companies I've covered over the last couple of years in videos. And uh, listen, if you want the next video to your inbox, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. That bell means you get an email whenever I release a video. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, here's the boring bit. Anything you hear or see in this video is not investment advice. It could be absolute rubbish. Please do your own research. Okay, Escape Hunt closed at 11 pence on Friday. That's an 8.84 million market cap, all right? And I take you through some of the news they had uh, this week, and this is uh, very encouraging. Progress on site rollout, Watford. Uh, they're pleased to announce this exchange contracts for a site at the previous Into Center. Of course, Into, this is the thing, you see? These commercial landlords are having a heck of a time into administration. The rest of them are crying out for new tenants. So um, if you read you know, previous updates from Escape, and they said they went to these high footfall sites pre-COVID, and they couldn't really afford the rent, and so they had to walk away. Now, those landlords are coming back to them saying, come back, we'll give you better options, cheaper rent, you know, incentives, uh, we'll take some of the risk as well. So they're falling over themselves to get them at these sites. So anyway, uh, into Centre Watford, contracts are expected to complete within next week. So even though we've got a lockdown here, COVID lockdown, okay, which is not good, of course, for a company as a lesser company, it's a month, that's all it is. But they're getting these sites, these high, these premium sites, these shopping centre sites, um, you know, at affordable rents. So COVID for them has been an advantage for them commercially. Uh, the Watford site will be the company's 14th owner-operated site. Of course, they have a target of 20 midterm, 50 longer term. After the brewery quarter in Cheltenham and the recent acquisition of the former franchise site in Dubai, games for Watford site have been manufactured and are currently in transit for installation. Uh, fit out is expected to commence later this month. Under guidance currently available, the company does not expect any significant impact on timing as a result of the lockdown. So you can build this lockdown, of course, uh, the severity of it, uh, the regulations, the rules around it are less severe than the previous lockdown. It's only a month compared to three months previously. Um, and I'm going to put my neck out there and say this will be the last lockdown we have. Of course, I said that. I didn't think this lockdown would happen. Neither did Boris Johnson, to be honest, if he didn't know. Uh, but I think there's less tolerance for them. You know, uh, therapeutics are better. Uh, vaccines are around the corner. And so I think uh, we won't be, um, you know, having a lockdown at this going. So uh, Cheltenham, this is the 13th site. Fit out of the company's site of the brewery court in Cheltenham is substantially complete and subject to any further COVID related Progress is not expected to be impacted by lockdown. The site was due to open in November, that's this month, of course, but now will open as soon as practicable once the lockdown restrictions are lifted. I think they'll be opening up when the, uh, the lockdown is lifted. They'll be opening up with Cheltenham and Watford, two brand new sites to go. That's what I reckon. Uh, in time for the Christmas sort of you know period, recent trading. This is excellent revenue over the week beginning the twenty sixth of October, which in, co coincided with schools half term week, which is obviously good for them. Included uh, including the sales from new sites and digital products was twenty five percent ahead of the same period last year. I'm like you know. Uh, there's lockdowns in certain cities. Uh, on a like-for-like -like basis, the company's eight mature sites traded 96% of the 2019 level, despite four of the sites being adversely affected by either government's Tier 2, Tier 3, or Scottish COVID-rated restrictions. So even with those restrictions, those sites traded at nearly you know, the same capacity as last year. You know, this is um, very impressive. The demand is there, absolutely there. You know, recent trading Basingstoke. I went to this uh, to the public. It opened on 20th of October. Initial trading has been the strongest of any company's new sites to date. Uh, the other recently opened site in Norwich delivered sales, usually associated with a fully mature site, despite it being only five weeks old. This will be increasingly popular as Escape and the brand becomes more. You know. In, more in people's consciousness because it will be once you get one in every town people will have heard about them and uh, people tell other people oh you should go to escape hunt you know and so the marketing becomes I don't have to market so much and uh, there'll be more people on the mailing list you know more people spreading the news so we've got a, a rolling momentum here building and uh, the more sites they own the more efficient they become and uh, the more well known this will be in my mind this is why I've taken a position here in my mind this will be a recognisable brand within th within a couple of years and it'll be like a Hollywood Bowl brand style brand where everyone's heard of because there'll be one in every major town city um, so demand is strong that equals good growth 
people pay like crazy for growth. You know, you can earn your best returns from growing companies, not dividend paying companies, growth companies. That's where the money gets earned. Uh, recent trading, EBITDA. In all of the companies UK owned and operate sites, EBITDA conversion ratios have been substantially better than in prior periods, assisted by more efficient labor usage and benefiting from the f flexible furlough scheme and VAT reduction. So it's, again, not only operationally uh, it, for new sites, as COVID sort of helped them, but they've been able to sort of, uh, you know, save money on furloughs and all that stuff. So, so it's, I mean, it's delaying the rollout. That's pretty much all it's doing. But the, the demand is there. So when they open them back up, demand is there again. Uh, recent trading digital remote play, this is. Digital and remote play products have also begun to contribute meaningfully. These didn't exist six months ago. Their turnover in recent weeks has been growing strongly. And the resultant EBITDA contribution has exceeded the equivalent EBITDA from a separate mature site. Succeeded. Now, their target for each site is around about 150,000 EBITDA, right? So they're doing, and this is, so they still do these in during lockdown, this digital remote play stuff. So this is where they are, current locations in black, and then upcoming locations in blue, uh, Watford, Cheltenham, Kingston. Uh, of course, there's, there's 15 sites of break and there's one Dubai as well. But uh, like I said, the roadmap to sort of um, mid-term mid target 20, Longer term time, 50. Uh, so this is Escapant's roadmap to one pound, all right, using target EBITDA of 150 grand per site and a valuation of 10 times uh, EBITDA. And just to check that this is uh, Equidam, you can go on this and it shows you the uh, EBITDA levels of valuations for each sector. Leisure and recreation is 13.36. So I'm going on 10, so that's below the average, okay? So I'm being quite conservative. Like I said, now EBITDA is... is, is um, their conversion rates are getting better. So this is their target previous to COVID. Um, so I think on both levels, I'm being quite conservative. So this is very complex looking spreadsheet at the start. But what we got here is the dates on this side, okay? Um, and the site numbers. Now you can go by site numbers or dates. They may not, I'm, they've been releasing pretty much opening one per month. They continue to do this, you can stick by the, the dates. But they may not do that, so you can still go by the sites anyway, because that's relevant, of course, to the EBITDA levels. And I've taken three levels here, okay? Lockdown level, EBITDA, this is the average, 150. This is below average, okay, because of restricted capacity. And I've even gone half of the average because of lockdowns. Now, Basingstoke, Cheltenham and Watford, three sites obviously there be opened up this, this uh, end of this year. So at the moment, this is what the valuation are. On, 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 this is 10 times this on 12 sites, 12 sites comes to that times 10, of course, that's 9 million. That's the valuation, which gives us pretty much where we are at the moment, 11 pence a share. Uh, just a little bit about that. I've, I've only two decimal points have gone to there. Once they open that, it'll be that 12 pence a share. Watford, and I'm using the lower EBITDA here, right? Half of the average. So with 14 sites, the company should be valued about 10.5 million. That's 13 pence a share. Okay, that's a... Uh, that's a 90% increase on the share price right now. Let's go to 2021. Now, I think now, vaccines, are, I've been reading, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I get news every day on vaccines. And uh, there's quite a few companies, Pfizer, AstraZeneca, some of the big farmers, very confident having a vaccine out there, probably in December, generally in January. Uh, it's, you know, the, 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 regular, the regulatory authorities are testing, are looking at the data as they go. This never normally happens. First of all, you have to complete all the data of the trials, phase one, two, and three. Then you submit all the data to the regulatory regula authorities, like uh, you know, in the UK or in America, FDA, and it takes them a year, pretty much, to look through that, or six months or a year, depending. But they're obviously fast-tracking the COVID vaccines through. And the regulators are looking at the data as they go. And I just saw CEO of AstraZeneca said he's very confident if the regulators are fast when we give the data to them, you know, uh, we can get a vaccine out there by January, probably by December, we'll start vaccinating people. There's plans by the NHS to start vaccinating people before, before um, Christmas. So this is what I'm saying. So I'm saying in January, we go back to below average, but we go EBITDA per site is around 100 grand. All right. And this is the valuation here. 15 million, that's 19 pence. That's 70% up. Um, February... This is obviously site 16. Every site's been opened up per month. But it, it, you can ignore this if you don't think they'll be this quick in opening sites. Just go by these sites, okay? Um, and then we got to March. I'm saying at 17 million, that's a valuation there. It's 21 pence. That's pretty much double where we are at the moment. And then I think I've heard lots of people saying, you know, uh, in authority saying by March next year, a lot of the population that needs vaccines will be vaccinated. 
All right, so I'm going up to now back to average EBITDA. All right, so I'm not going over the top. And like I said, that is the target EBITDA, and now they're more efficient. And so I believe I'm being quite conservative here. So in April, I believe they should be valued at 27 million with 18 sites. Okay, that's 34 pence, a 205% increase. And then we go through this uh, June, to May, June, 30 million. And then pretty much by December next year, site 26, we get there, or well, regardless of December, it could be later than that, but site 26, uh, they'll be valued at 39 million on this EBITDA level. Okay, that's 49 pence. That's 340 as a full bag is four times where we are at the moment, pretty much. Sort of 11, so sort of, in fact, more than four times, isn't it? Four and a half times. And then uh, I, the franchises, uh, franchisees and, and all that stuff. So they've got, you know, last year they had 1.1 million from uh, revenue from franchises. They had 300,000 EBITDA from that. So again, from a value of 10. And the digital remote play again. This is end of 2021. They're already doing this now. So I'm not being, you know, over the top here and overly optimistic. So I've added that to that, 42 million, 43.5 million. That's 52, 54 pounds. That's 400% up pretty much. Okay, five times where you are at the moment. Uh, let's go to 2022. I've just stuck with the average now, EBITDA. And then site 27, it goes up, goes up, goes up. Uh, at the end of December 2022, we'll be at 77 pence, that's 600% up. Okay, add this on. And then you've got 700% up with the, um, I've added 20% growth in these alone. Not, 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 not crazy growth, 20% growth on last year. Okay, so 65 million valuation, 66 or 67. That's where we are, pretty much 650% up. And then 2023, we get to pretty much up here, look, uh, at the end of 2023, site 49, okay? There'll be over a pound a share. In fact, site 46 will be that. And then add this on, that's over a 10 bagger, of course. That's nine times, 10 times your money, because 9% up. Um, and I think this is, if they stick to this plan, this is conservative, because I, I just genuinely think the market works ahead of time, all right? So the share price will start rising. It, I, I think they get to site 30, you know, and uh, go back to 2022. I think they get to site run here in, in, in mid sort of the, and people are realizing they're getting towards 50 and the share price will start rocketing. And you have growth as well, growth in the numbers, in the revenue. And I think it'll do very well, you know, and I think it, the share price will shoot ahead of this. But that is basically, if it, if it pegs this valuation level all the way, that's the way it'll get to that 10 bagger, all right? Uh, these projections do not include economies of scale and brand awareness, like I said, and nor do they, you know, pricing it in, stock market pricing it in, you know. Uh, there was one other bit of news, of course. Justin Waite, 3.11%. I've, you know, I've taken a chunk of this. I've been there. I like it. I, I bought more after I went because the experience is very good. It's very professional. It's way and above, you know, the quality of any other site out there, these independents. And they're the biggest operator. This is a premium brand. It's going to be a market leader. You name a company, there's going to be a market leader. You can see it. There can be some doubt, of course, because people doubt it when it's, it's, it's you know, at the moment, you can't see 50 sites ahead of you. But name a, you know, a, a market leader like this where you can have, you know, a, a decent chunk of the company at this price. I think COVID's knocked it down so hard. But we're talking about a months away and we're back to pretty much, what let's say, well, it, 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 you saw the figures, you know, 96% they're at of 2019. And that's with the lockdowns, the tier one, tier two, tier three lockdowns. So I think I've no doubt pretty much they go back to the demand they got pre-COVID. Uh, like I said, at, at, what, 50, 40, 40 to 50% up growth year in year pre-COVID in, in March. So I think they'll go back to that and people start to realize, wow, this is cheap. Uh, and this was the time, the, the time was to buy was when the fear was in. Um, so these are my returns. This is to the 6th of November, three months, 117%, uh, so 12 months, 64%, 36 months, I've done 560%. These are screenshotted from my Barclays um, uh, app there. Um, all together from the start, that's the percentage gain I've had. All right. Thanks for hanging around to the end. I know most people watch a video for 10 minutes on average. So uh, if you did stick around to the end, I do appreciate it. A lot of information there. But uh, by all means, uh, any comments below, I'll try and get back to if I can, as soon as I can. And uh, if you like this video, don't forget, hit my face there, okay? And uh, hit the notification bell as well. And there's some more videos for you to watch right there. Thanks very much for watching.